So when I was making my two hour Pokemon Sapphire retrospective, I briefly mentioned this form I used to use called Poke Stadium. I was super active here around 2010 and 11, like I'd usually log on for a couple hours after school every day. I discovered this place because it had a Pokemon trainer card creator, which was right up my alley, but I stuck around because this website had a community of artists that created Pokefusions, which are a combination of multiple Pokemon into one. You've probably seen some of the Pokefusions made by that one website that slaps the face from one Pokemon to another and recolors its body, but those are really simple compared to what the community at Poke Stadium was capable of. I loved scrolling through the dozens of submissions uploaded every day, and it made me want to get in on the action too. So I started to dabble in Photoshop, and here's a couple of the fusions I made back in the day. After a few months of just submitting Pokefusions, I decided to finally use the website's forums, which had probably one of the coolest communities on the planet. Everyone wanted to make art, and they wanted to see other people's art, so it wasn't uncommon for people to take requests to make free Pokefusions or banners for each other. And some of the more talented artists would only make art for people by hosting competitions where you'd have to make a fusion of 3-6 to six randomly selected Pokemon, and these are some of my favorite creations. I was really proud of this Togepi Mawile Arbok fusion, and I like the Shroomish Tangrowth Roll one because it looks really silly. And <laughs> remember silly bands? I was making these for free, and I almost missed one of my 7th grade band concerts because I was so focused on getting them finished. The entire website is shut down now, I'm not entirely sure when, I think like 2014-ish, maybe like late 2013, but I stopped going around here around late 2012 because I was losing interest in Pokemon at the time, and like a year earlier, the admin, Johan, it, it might be Johan, I always called him Johan because it made sense in my head, but uh, he updated the interface for the entire website and just disappeared like right after that, and I remember that putting the forum in a really chaotic time, like the mods had no idea what was happening, and if I had to guess, the website shut down probably because Johan lost interest in it too. So to access the pages I'm on now, I'm using the Wayback Machine, which has quite a bit archived, and one page that was saved is this post I made exactly 10 years ago today, the Shroudum region. The inspiration for Shroudum was this Bowser sprite submitted by, I think, either Jalorda Princess or Tangroth Jelly. It clearly uses Blastoise as its base, and seeing it flipped a switch in my head that the Mario universe has a lot of potential if it were a Pokemon game. A lot of enemies have larger variants, like Goomba and Goomba, so it made sense to turn them into an evolution line. And also at this time, I discovered the Mario Wiki, and I would often go here just to learn about anything I could find, so I had a lot of random Mario knowledge that I wanted to use. So like the Kanto region, I came up with 151 enemies to feature in the world, but before I get into the Pokedex, let's get into the post. As you can see by the rabbit avatar, this is me, I've been using that thing for 10 years. And also, you can see I called it the Pop-Tart Bunnies. Oh my god. Pop-Tart Bunnies! Ah, <laughs> uh, this probably explains why I was <laughs> such a dork to my peers. Also, I have more than 1,500 posts, which uh, I think was in the top three for members with posts at the time. Before the forums updated, there was a tiny banner under your avatar that updated every time you made 100 posts, and it would be the gym leaders from each generation. So I think after 900, it went to Johto, and then uh, at 1,700, it went to Hoenn, and so on and so forth. I think it's more insane that I have that many posts, considering I'm super duper introverted in real life. Uh, <laughs> I guess I just treated it as like a leaderboard of sorts. You can also see that there has been 443 replies to this topic, and most of it was just me and this other guy, Blake Quaza, bantering about Mario. Uh, Blake was super into this project, and he wanted to help me complete the Pokedex, and maybe even program a game with the sprites. I don't think it was ever going to happen, considering Blake was like 11 at the time, but it definitely motivated me to keep working on this thing. So let's get right into this now. So I actually started the post out with a little bit of lore. So uh, this is an island that was called the Mushroom Kingdom, but everyone called it Shroudum because that's just an abbreviated version of Mushroom Kingdom. Most people, in <laughs> I, I don't, because this part sounds stupid, but most people get the Shroudum Island confused with the Mushroom Kingdom from Mario's world, but in the Pokemon world, scientists have attempted to make Pokemon based off the creatures that roam Mushroom Kingdom. Um, yeah, I guess just, uh, you know, scientists being like, hey, that world looks cool, let's make that our world, <laughs> which is probably uh, dangerous. Uh, the Shroudum region has been filled with castles from old ruins, and people decided to make gyms using these castles. Thus, gym leaders and Elite Four members were founded. These people are fans of the Mario world, so they disguise themselves as characters from the series. Dot dot dot. That's it. That's all the lore. Uh, you know, I could probably workshop this a bit, but uh, 
you know, it, it's really simple. You know, it's just Mario and Pokemon into one. I don't know why the Pokemon world has to be inspired by the Mario world and just copying everything, but you know, hey. And right away we have the map for the region, which uh, isn't really inspired by anything. I was just using the map tools from, I think this is the Diamond and Pearl map layout. It, it sure looks like it. The water looks not great. The island kind of looks like reverse Mexico. Uh, just, you know, three random islands that are like almost equidistant from the main island. Yeah, there's a lot I could have done on here, but I just wanted to like put paths together and I think I made the island afterward. I think I made the island first actually. That was probably like my worst first move. And I did put a key for what the colors of all the towns mean. So the red towns all have gyms inside them. So therefore you can see uh, there's nine, eight gyms and then the elite four or the Pokemon League will be in the top left island. Blue is for a minor town, so it's just a passing town. You know, like the first town, the second town, and just about every Pokemon game. On the two islands on the right side, you can see there's a little green space. Basically, those are boat stops because the the big blue square town, that was a harbor. I actually have a list of, like, what some of the towns and routes are going to be based off of. Um, you, you start off in the very bottom left. That would be, like, grasslands, and then I, I have listed here Route 2. I don't have, I, I, a lot of these routes, I don't know which number they would correlate with, but uh, I know this, the route right after the little blue circle, that would be based on World 1 from Super Mario Bros. So, you know, not grassy at all, but whatever. And then the red town there would be based on Toad Town from Paper Mario 64. Then you go up a bit and you have a little T-shaped area. I believe that was going to be like a forest. Get your bug types, get some poison types, all that stuff. And then to the right there is... I think actually the plan here was that you would pass through the the town on the right side there, uh, the, the, the L-shaped town, and keep going up to that circle. And then the circle was the second gym, and that was a ghost type, and you'd go through the desert to get to that. I think also the gym would then double as a ghost mansion, and you could catch all your ghost types at the gym, which was probably like a pretty unique idea. Um, but yeah, then the deserts, uh, I have a few inspirations for those. Like uh, I chose Western Junction from Mario Sports Mix, that's a pull. Uh, I mean, it was, it was probably very recent in my head because this was during the Wii era when I made this. And then Route 6, this, see, this is why I know I was, like, <laughs> on some other plane of existence. Because Route 6 is Tall Tall Mountain. I'm guessing that would be, like, right where the, the Ghost Mansion was. And I know I wanted that to be a mountain, but, you know, Tall Tall Mountain is kind of a weird choice again. And then uh, the Blue Square Town, that was meant to be Rico Harbor because I said that was, like, a harbor. And you would ride boats to get to the two islands on the right side. I don't know exactly what I wanted the top half of the island to be because I want to fit in like Ice World, Cloud World, and Mountain World, and probably Cave World all into that area. But for whatever reason, the blue circle area in the top right corner of that island was Flipsville from Super Mario Galaxy 2, which is a grassy area, so what is going on? <laughs> uh, but I, I do know that like where that red like rectangle oval shape in the center, that would be like a mountain. And then, I don't know what the blue circle to the left of that was. That I think that was the ice area. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely going to be like a mountain range in the top center. The bottom right island was going to be Pinna Park. I think that would be the 7th gym. And then, the top right island would be Yoshi's Island. And then the top left, I didn't really have anything selected for top left. I do have Noki Bay listed from Super Mario Sunshine. Which, you know, I guess is a cool choice. But I think it would have probably been Bowser's Castle for the Pokemon League there. So your characters from the very beginning are going to be Toad and Toadette for the boy and girl. Uh, it made a lot of sense for me because like you don't want to do like you don't want to blow your load with Mario and Peach. And then the professor is going to be Toadsworth. Uh, you know, also a pretty simple choice if you have like the whole early area being like Toad Town. I think like just all the trainers in the entire game, all civilians were going to be Toads. And then like the gym leaders would be like all the human characters that are like unique and cool and. Because, like, you don't see a lot of people like Mario in the Mario universe. I'm just saying Luigi's Mansion is kind of fucking with that. But you don't see many Marios out there. You go to New Donk City, everyone's looking like tall businessmen with the fucking PlayStation 2 faces. But hey, that, that's just how it was back in 2011, okay? But yeah, uh, first would be a normal type gym in Toad Town. I don't have the sprite anymore, but it was Princess Peach. 
and she would give out the mushroom badge. On this page, at least, a lot of the images are gone because TinyPic was like the main website everyone used to upload pictures because um, you had to do like a bit of coding yourself every time you wanted to make a post or like update a banner. So TinyPic was the most convenient way to convert an image into some code for forum posts. The caveat, which we didn't know at the time, was that your pic can just disappear at any time on <laughs> no notice. Uh, but a lot of these happen to stay. Uh, I, you know, it's very rare that something would disappear after like a month or two, but uh, I'm very impressed that uh, enough of these have stayed. I wouldn't say impressed because that means that the website's kind of shit, but uh, yeah, I mean, we still have a lot to work with. I do have a lot of the sprites archived in my computer, but the second gem will be the ghost type. Like I said, you get a flash badge, which looks like a flashlight, and the gym leader would be Professor E. Gatch from Luigi's Mansion. I think at the time, I, I didn't know who I wanted it to be, and then someone, this is actually like, I, I, I don't remember if I submitted the Toadsworth sprite, um, the hat looks like some shitty job I would have done, but it might have been like a recolor by someone else, but EGAD, I know for a fact someone else did make that one, a lot of the trainers actually people submitted those. The third gym is going to be a water type gym, uh, and you get the shell badge, I don't have anyone selected for that one. The fourth gym is the electric type gym, and you get the star badge from winning that one. Again, I don't have a character selected to be the gym leader. Fifth is the flying type gym, and you get the banana badge, and it's Waluigi for the leader, which <laughs> I don't... What a combo. I don't even know where to start. Sixth gym is ice type. You get the false badge. I don't even know what that means. No gym leader selected. And here's the most exciting thing that I can reveal right now is that I was going to totally remove the dark type from the game and switch it out for bomb type because there's a lot of bomb based enemies. Uh, like, just for starters, Bob-omb is a bomb. Like, what other type could it be other than, you know, fire type would make a lot of sense. But I'm like, you know, all the enemies are already evil. Like, why do we need a dark type? I think some of the instances where I should have had a dark type, I used Psychic or something. But the gym is a, you get the garlic badge from Wario, which, you know, that's a pretty good combo. Um, and the Wario sprite is using Crasher Wake as a base, which makes him look nice and strong. Maybe I was flipping things around. The fourth gym might have been Pinna Park, but I think the seventh gym probably made more sense to have you Pinna Park, um, like order wise. Eighth gym is going to be the ground type, but that one would be on Yoshi's Island. So, you know, that's a weird selection, especially since I think the gym leader would probably make the most sense to be Daisy for the type because she's from Sarasa Land, which is primarily a desert. And then the, the badge you get is the block badge. So I was definitely thinking in the like, two different directions here. I mean, a block based badge makes sense, especially for like a rock or ground type. But, you know, putting that with Daisy, I don't know if that's a good combo. Then I'm going to have the fucking banana badge with Waluigi. So I don't know. I don't even know what the fucking false badge is. I, I don't think I have that sprite anymore. Oh, you know, I think the false badge would have been the Bowser head because that was I'm probably like Mario Party inspired with all the Bowser gags, Mario Party 1. I don't know. But why would it be ice type? That's the thing. Uh, I made the badges before I decided the types, but then, like the type would make sense because, you know, like world three is like usually the beach world and then you go into sky and ice world. I mean, the, the snow world is usually sooner, but that one you can push back because you have the mountains back there too. And then the elite four, we have the rock type, which is uh, Rosalina. And then Dragon, Bug, Fire, and the Champion is any. I have the Mario spread. I don't know why I never posted it here. I think it was because I wasn't sure if I wanted Mario to be the champion or not, or if I wanted to make a new Mario spread, because the current one is like a kid. I think I was going to commit to him being the champion, because I made the fourth Elite Four member Fire type on purpose, so it'd be Luigi. But yeah, here's the part I'm sure you're all waiting for. We're going to go through the entire Pokedex. So yeah, let's just marathon through these if I have something to say about them. Usually if I have the sprite made, I'll maybe have a little tidbit about it. But first is Piranha Plant. I, I chose that to be the grass starter. Piranha Plant was, I think, the first sprite I ever made for the Pokemon universe. The lips are red instead of white. That was just like a weird decision on my end, obviously. Uh, the white circles are colored in super weird. The pipe is just like a pot, there's no leaves. There's a lot I could have done with the sprite, but again, because it was like my first one, I, I didn't want to go back and recreate old sprites. I just wanted to keep going on and on and on. I think Piranha Plant makes a lot of sense as the grass type starter because there's a lot of species of Piranha Plant. Um, I'm sure you could guess if you're a Mario fan what the final evolution would be, but there's still a lot of options for what the second Pokemon could be, and I chose it to be Stocking Piranha Plant from, uh, like, I think it started in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. That might be its only appearance, actually. But it's a Piranha Plant that extends its neck up high, and I think after this one you can kind of guess what the final evolution is if you know anything about Piranha Plants now, because that is PD Piranha Plant. This is probably my favorite sprite. I was super proud of it. Uh, PD Piranha is one of my favorite Mario bosses on a visual level. I, I think the flowers around its head like really 
put it all together. <laughs> I think the little polka dot pants are silly. But yeah, I love the sprite. Yeah, it gets like pushed out of the water by the Mario and Luigi 3DS game sprites. But yeah, I was really happy with this one. I think the sprite's probably still too big for a DS template. It might be taller than 128 pixels. I think that's the template size. But that doesn't matter. I, I really like the sprite. And I even made a shiny of it. Some of the sprites I do have shinies for, and um, yeah, I chose Fiery Dino Piranha for a little red fiery pattern. I think that looks super cool too. For the fire type starter, I chose Podobu, which probably makes the most sense. There's not a huge amount of fire-based enemies in the Mario universe. I mean, there's a lot, but they usually just use fire as like a projectile. They're, they're not like made out of fire, so Podobu fits into that. I'm pretty sure I used Monferno for the base of the, the fire tail. Uh, you can see the fireballs were probably made by me because they look awful. And Podobu evolves into Fire Snake, which I think also uses Monfer- No, oh, those are different colors, I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, Infernape. I'm not 100% sure on that. And then I have no idea where the Fire Sprite for that tail came from, but... Obviously I didn't make it because it's copied and pasted. And I think in my head I usually try and make things a bit unique. Uh, but- it <laughs> But it's Evolution, and my god, this might be the worst thing I've ever made. <laughs> this is such an abomination. It's Angry Sun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, you know, a big trend you're gonna see is that if I need a circle, I had no idea how to like make circles because the circle tool is like super wonky on Photoshop and I didn't know how to like uh, rasterize circles and I, I don't know if that would even help for like circles this small in Photoshop. We have a quill lava fire on top of it. It's not even centered. We have three rapid ash tails. Two random fire sprites. I have no idea. That might be Charmander. I'm not 100% sure on that. The face looks awful. This might be better than the fucking Angry Sun in Super Mario Maker 2 for New Super Mario Bros. U. I would pick it just to, just to look at it, this awful monstrosity. And uh, the water starter, this is probably the easiest to pick. We have Baby Cheap, uh, you know, with a little tiny Cheap Cheap. And then uh, it, it evolves into Cheap Cheap, which I think after Piranha Plant was the second spread I ever made. This is kind of like a Pokefusion 2 where you see a uh, Voltorb influence with a circle. I believe that is Seeking's eyes and mouth. And then um, the tail might be Seeking or Golding. I really don't remember. I haven't seen their sprites for a while. Uh, and then the, the Mohawk and the wings are original. Unfortunately, the Mohawk is off-centered. It just kind of like carves into like his eyebrow area. Uh, you know, the wing's not too bad, but it probably could have been a lot better. But this was, was one of my first sprites. This is an OG cheap, cheap sprite. And then we got a fucking Electrode again. We have Boss Bass as the final evolution. Electrode with an Exploud Mouth. Uh, I did a bit better of a job centering the little frills. I don't know what you call that. I don't know anatomy stuff. I don't think it's too bad. It looks it looks like Boss Bass. I would expect to see this in a Mario game. Minus the hyper-realistic <laughs> mouth compared to the body. Yeah, I'm not too disappointed in this one. It looks not that bad. Alright, so our Rattata-type Pokemon would be Goomba. That's a pretty obvious choice. That'll be normal type, and it evolves into Goomboss, as I've probably said before. Uh, that one, that's the first Pokemon I don't have a sprite for, I just made Goomba. And you know, Goomba kind of looks off. I wasn't trying to go like on model until a bit later. I wish the eyebrows I would have made black, but you know, we'll have to take this one for what it is. And then I was going to include an item called the P-Wing, and you would give that to your Pokemon and it would make them a flying type. And so Goomba, you could also evolve into a Paragoomba, which would be normal flying type. I don't know if the stats would change at all, I didn't think that far into advance, but expect to see a couple flying types that have the... P-Wing added onto them. Although a lot of these I never made sprites for, so you can't hold me accountable for that. And also in this area we have Koopa Troopa, another obvious one. I don't remember if I made the sprite or if this was submitted by someone, because it looks like something someone else would make, but I wouldn't be surprised if I made it because it looks more Poke fusion y But it's a Squirtle with a Turtle Beak, I'm guessing that might be Tirtuga. The reason why I don't think it was me is because the feet are literally just colored in, they're not shoes, and I think that's a little detail I probably would have put in. It's evolution, and this might be a bit controversial, but I chose Boom Boom. I don't know what else it could have been for a Koopa evolution, without it just being like a bigger Koopa. Like, I I mean, look, Bowser might be like an easy option, but Bowser has to be saved for post stuff. Like, you can't put that early on, that's too broken. Boom Boom makes sense. You can also get a Paratroopa with AP Wing, and that makes sense too. And then I guess I wasn't sure if you could have Koopa turn into Dry Bones at any point, because, you know, Dry Bones is just like a Koopa skeleton. 
but I made it, I made it with a Charmander sprite and it evolves into Dry Bowser. I, I like the Dry Bowser sprite, it's probably one of the uglier ones I made towards the end. Yeah, it's a restructured Blastoise. I think the face is just the weirdest looking part because I should have darkened my darks for that, but having Dry Bowser be available pretty early on compared to having Bowser available later on might be a weird decision. Maybe Dry Bowser would be saved for like a later end Pokemon, but I, I guess I just chose it to show up early on because it's essentially a Koopa Troopa skeleton. And then I probably would have had Dry Goomba in the Pokedex too, but Dry Goomba did not exist at this point because this was 2011. I think New Super Mario Bros. 2 came out two years later roughly. And then another Koopa, I don't know if this one was going to be available by using an item or if it was just going to be a late game Pokemon, but Koopa Troll from Paper Mario. It's a steel type, basically like a Koopa with armor. And I'm not sure if these next ones would be uh, like version exclusives, but we got Buzzy Beetle and Spiny. I probably made these at the same time because they're pretty similar conceptually. That's a weird way to say that, but Buzzy Beetle would probably have a bit more defenses. Spiny would have a bit more attack. And I also have a shiny sprite for, for Spiny. Decide to make it green. That might be inspired by Mario and Luigi because I don't think there's any green spinies normally. I, I never played any Mario and Luigi games, so I can't verify that, but I probably looked it up on Mario Wiki at the time. And next we have Lack 2 as a flying type. It's a Diglett and a Swablu Cloud. This was another one of my earliest creations. This might actually be the second or third one, somewhere around like Piranha Plant and uh, Cheap Cheap. It's a pretty simple sprite, and then it evolves into Gigalac 2, which is probably one of my favorite sprites out of this entire collection. It is a war turtle riding a Torkoal Cloud, and then I think I did a pretty good job recoloring it. I like the the lighting effect underneath the cloud, which I totally copied off the game, which is what I probably should have been doing anyways. And now we get a Grass Bug type in Squiggler. I actually have a sprite for this one. I think Squiggler is only in New Super Mario Bros. DS. Uh, I might have to fact check that one, but it's the perfect choice for a pre-evolution to Wiggler, which would obviously be in this game. It's going to be the evolution and uh, don't have a sprite for that one. I probably would have uh, actually made it based on the Wiggler in Super Mario Sunshine. Make it green. I don't know. I, I like it, but then again, only the orange Wiggler turns into Flutter because Flutter is orange itself. And obviously that would be the final evolution. Uh, so I think Squiggler would evolve into Wiggler at 7 and then Wiggler into Flutter at 10 just to like give you a little strong Pokemon early on. But yeah, get a little bug flying type there. And then we have a few other bug types. But first, I guess uh, we're just going to skip to Fuzzy, a poison type. I didn't mention it, but the forest area behind Toad Town would have been the forest from Paper Mario 64. And it makes sense because Fuzzy is available here. I think I used to have a sprite for this one. There was a period where my computer just like reset like 10 days. I don't know how to explain it, but like literally anything I saved was erased. My history on like all websites was erased for 10 days. It's so weird. Like I just lost like a lot of work for no reason. But yeah, I know Fuzzy was definitely a sprite that I, I had that I lost. And next we have some bug poison types. Sue, I think from Mario Land. Again, I never played that one. I believe that was like a spider. I think this brown sprite that I have is its evolution Kuma. I, I think I might have had those two also like before my um, computer like erased a bunch of files, but I do have a Kuma sprite I was like working on. Yeah, I think I, I wasn't sure how the legs should be because I think I made the body too big, but also the leg is just tiny. And then we have another bug type in Mandabug from Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, it's like a little beetle guy that you ground pound. I <laughs> I like this one. You know, its mouth is a bit too big, but hey, I think uh, it's a fun sprite. And then it evolves into Bugaboom. Obvious choice as the boss of Honey Hive Galaxy. And I think it shows up in like Puzzle Plank Galaxy and Galaxy 2. It's probably too wide, but I mean, the legs are just flying around. He's fucking insane with the, the hypno eyes. You know, people talk about bees not being able to fly because their bodies are too big, but how does this guy fly? His wings are tiny. And now we get to go into the desert. As you can see, I was kind of ordering these Pokemon based on like where you would find them because I didn't want to like chuck in a bunch of like desert enemies and being like, oh no, I need enemies to show up in like the cave or the mountain. I was kind of spacing it out like that, but at the same time, I don't remember if I was doing a good job because there are a lot of ground types. There's a lot, there's a lot of desert Pokemon here. We're starting things off with these enemies from Super Mario Land. I have no idea how to pronounce. The first one is Ganchan or Ganchan. I believe that one is just a a rock with cheekbones or like little cheeks. Uh, and then it evolves into Tokotoko or Takataka, which is a large 
uh, like Onga Bunga <laughs> Easter Island head with arms, I'm pretty sure. And then I believe the evolution, God, Yoi <laughs> Hoi. That one has arms and legs, and in the games it would throw rocks at you, so I made that one a rock fighting type. Yeah, I think that's a good, like, Geodude type Pokemon. Then we got Poke Sprout. The sprite is based on Super Mario Sunshine's Poke Sprout. That's an evolve into Poke, uh, which is based on the Paper Mario sprite. This one's not too bad. I don't know what I copied for the circle. Maybe I made an original circle for once. Also in the desert is Tweester, the Tornado, which is a rock ground type. I remember using the Gust sprite from, like, uh, Gen 3 for this one. It looks kind of weird because it is just, like, it, it looks like a little body, but, like, uh... <laughs> with like a trophy head and like a gown over its feet and then you have like random rocks and bone circling it but uh yeah i mean i look i was pretty lazy i didn't know how to make a tornado this is the best looking option i think i could have come up with at the time and now we have squeak a little mouse i believe these are normally supposed to show up in a ghost house or in, God, there's so many mouse enemies actually no i think squeak is from paper mario uh because those guys are in the desert a lot of this is based or inspired by paper mario because spoiler alert i really love that game but yeah squeak and then it evolves into mauser which is our first bomb type uh mauser from uh super mario bros 2 which uh another mario game i really haven't played and next is grunt no idea what that enemy is but that one would evolve into bandit uh which is like the same thing but with a mask that has a face on it it, it might not even be a mask it might just be a white face and we also i think this is where we get into the forest where we have ninji which is a psychic normal type not sure if psychic normal type would be good because again i did remove the dark type so i think psychic made the most sense for me but yeah it'd probably be like a fast uh, like last cannon type pokemon probably still a weak physically and defensively but you know super fast because of mario maker 2 ninji speed runs next up is swooper this was submitted by blake waza i do remember um he would actually submit quite a bit and i rejected probably like 30 percent of the stuff he submitted but it looks wonky because uh he uses zubat as the base and then like i think the wings need to be higher i don't know if swooper has feet i think it does yeah i think he also just uses the zubat palette which, uh, actually, no, Zubat's more blue, isn't it? But, yeah, it's a super sprite right there. And now we have Boo. Yeah, so here's, like, where we're in the ghost house, definitely. I don't know if Ninji would show up in the ghost house. I, I definitely would put it in the forest now. But it's listed with, like, all the ghost house Pokemon and desert Pokemon. But Boo! That's my baby boy. I love Boo. <laughs> we have Voltorb for the base. Uh, arms, of course, the shading has to be not good. Uh, and then the mouth is there <laughs> that's a boo all right and obviously it's gonna evolve into king boo if i had a final team in this game king boo would definitely be in there because boo is one of my favorite mario enemy characters i've been maining boo and mario party for a long time so boo is my guy and also here we can find maybe i don't know if this is gonna be the ghost house still it, it would make sense just because of paper mario but uh, first we have spike from new super mario bros ds and then he evolves into clubba which is like a bigger spike and then the, the spiky ball is now a club and then of course clubba is gonna evolve into tubba blubba a ground ghost type also in the ghost house we have bruiser a ghost fighting type uh, also from new super mario bros i made this sprite but i believe the idea for this one was submitted by someone uh, in the chat when i was like still thinking of what the pokedex would be and now we got some moles we have monty mole as a ground type and uh, no sprite for it it will <laughs> no evolution selected Literally the only thing as question mark, question mark, question mark in this Pokedex. Because I don't know what Monty Mole would evolve into, but I know there's like a bunch of mole enemies, unless I'm totally crazy. But it can't be these mole enemies, Undergrunt. Uh, from Super Mario Galaxy. It is a mole with a like spiky steel helmet and then you have that evolve into Major Burrows obviously which is bigger mole with spikier helmet. And then Urchin, a water fire type. I think the Urchin in Mario Galaxy switches but it might be the same enemy because it there's like a furry version in the fire areas but then like a watery version in the water slash ice areas. It might even be inspired by like those chestnut enemies that like explode in Mario DS. And next we have Blooper. Okay, so here's where like there's a bit of complication because I absolutely would love to have Blooper evolve into Gooper Blooper, but for whatever reason I didn't include that in the Pokedex. So that makes me think that Blooper was the modern design instead of like the Super Mario Sunshine design. And I probably would prefer to do the Super Mario Sunshine design just to get a Gooper Blooper in here because that would absolutely be my water type for this game. And next up is Cataquack from Super Mario Sunshine. I'm sure everyone loves this enemy. It just loves flinging you and your watermelons up in the sky. Haha. <laughs> Uh, and that would evolve into Plungello, which is from the second mission, Tilt Slam Bam, Mirror Madness, Water Grass type. Probably slow, but <laughs> has high attack stat, I would guess. And next up we have 
So these are four different Pokemon, because remember I mentioned the P-Wing item? Hammer Bro, you could give it different items, like you could give it an Ice Ball, a Boomerang, and a Fireball, and those were all going to be different Pokemon. If I did it today, it probably would be like Arceus or uh, Genesect, where you give it an item and then its type changes, but it's still the same Pokemon. And for whatever reason, I only have the Boomerang Bro Sprite. I definitely have a normal Fire and Ice type one posted on the website. You can see there were <laughs> images here. But yeah, it's a reposed Charmeleon. There was one guy on the forum, I think his name was Hiker Man. I could be totally thinking of someone else, but he was just like taking requests to repose Pokemon Sprites. And immediately that clicked in my head, I'm like, okay, have Charmeleon throw in the hammer. Charmeleon could be Hammer Bro. And then, yeah, I just like recolored it, made it look like Hammer Bro. And then it evolves into Sludge Bro. Uh, that'd be normal type. And next up is a Psychic type. We have Toady. It's from Yoshi's Story, although it does appear in like Mario Party 5 as the Toady Orb. And it will evolve into Magikoopa. I have two sprites labeled Toady and Magikoopa. So I'm guessing the first one would have been Toady, and the second one I was just gonna like edit into Magikoopa. And then uh, Magikoopa will obviously evolve into Camella from Mario Galaxy. And then we have Electro Koopa. Maybe, yeah, maybe it makes sense that um, Pinna Park would be the fourth gym. Because here we have like a bunch of Pokemon I was probably going to put in the uh, Pinna Park area. And they're showing up now in the Pokedex, so that makes sense. But we have Electro Koopa from Pinna Park in Mario Sunshine as an electric type Koopa. It evolves into King Electro Koopa from uh, the fifth chapter. Then we have some water types. We have Puffer Cheap. See, it, it kind of like diminishes Cheap Sheep being a starter Pokemon when I have Puffer Cheap out here and Porka Puffer. So next up we have Top Mini. We have the Top Man Tribe from Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, Top Mini looking a little babyish. <laughs> Evolves into Top Man, obviously, and then again into Top Maniac. I like the Top Maniac sprite. It is based on a Ferrothorn sprite. Uh, the shading on the little button on the top looks like shit, but Top Maniac is a pretty cool looking enemy. And then I, I think I just wanted like another Steel type in Pinna Park, so I chose Junker Can from one of the Mario and Luigi games. I had to do a deep dive for that one. And it evolves into Junker, which is a, a Junker can is just Steel type. Junker is Steel Poison. I think I also wanted it because I thought that would be a sweet type combo. I don't think that's been done yet. And then we have Amp, which I chose to be Electric Ghost type. And then I guess we're in the Flying Land now, uh, based on what the Pokemon I have listed are. But uh, we have Snuff It. I have listed as Normal type. It would be the Mario 64 design. And I, I feel like I might have that also evolve into Sniff It. But I haven't evolved a Shy Guy instead. And then Shy Guy, obviously, you can give it a P Wing, make it a Fly Guy, even though Fly Guy has a little propeller on its head and not wings. But you know, I was going to do it that way. <laughs> Yeah, so here's some fun sprites. Uh, the first one was made by Blake. It is Jibber J from Super Mario Galaxy 2. As you can see, it's like Torchic. I don't know if those wings are Talo. I don't know what that's stolen from. I have no idea what the top of its head is or if that's original. But then it evolves into Fluzzard from Super Mario Galaxy 2 as well, which is a Ho-Oh sprite I spent a lot of work on. I was really happy with how this one turned out. This one might have been version exclusives, but we also have Klepto, uh, the bird that takes your hat in Super Mario 64 and it evolves into Buzzar, which I think is a similar type bird in Paper Mario. And then I guess now in the Pokedex were where Flipsville would have been because I have Pup Dozer, which is like a bug enemy from Mario Galaxy 2 from the Flipsville Galaxy. And it evolves into Glam Dozer, which is the boss of that galaxy as well. Actually, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm skipping way ahead. Fighter Fly. Uh, I believe Blake made a sprite for that one. Uh, it's like a Ledian with a Heracross horn. Yeah, on second note, this is actually not even what Fighter Fly looks like. Uh, it's gonna be a tinier bug from Mario Bros of all things. Uh, oh no, no, then it evolves into Battle Beetle. There we go. That's, sorry. I, I read it, but then I was second guessing that. Battle Beetle. Battle Beetle is from Super Mario Land 2. There you go. And then uh, we have, <laughs> what the fuck is Lemon Drop? I, I have the sprite. I was looking at the sprite before I made this video. No idea what game it's from. That, is that Mario or is that Yoshi? Like, Lemon Drop. Or Slime Drop. They don't know what it's called. Why did I name it Lemon Drop? Okay, also, or originally known as Lemon Drop, so it might have changed its name in the past 10 years. Because I guess if it appeared in Yoshi's New Island, it was renamed to Slime Drop, so that would make sense. But it evolves into Slime. Same shit. And then uh, also is Scuttlebug, which evolves into Tarantox. But yeah, uh, yeah, Glamdozer, I don't know if I mentioned this already. Glamdozer would be Bug Ground, Tarantox would be Bug Poison, Chomplet, and Chain Chomp. I, I know Chomplet was one of the sprites I did lose. I have Chain Chomp. I think I'm, I might have made that one a bit later, or I remade that one. But yeah, the Chain Chomp sprite looks really wonky. 
Uh, once again, it is using Electrode as a base. Like, take a shot every time Electrode is used. Dupless from Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door as a ghost type. Fizzlet, is that the purple electric enemy from Mario Galaxy 2? Uh, yeah. Bully from Mario 64 will evolve into Big Bully. Uh, I guess that one was one that Blake submitted that I never saved. Bully did get redesigned in uh, Mario 3D World, so I would probably do Bully and then maybe Prince Bully uh, as just an option because that would be a better looking design instead of having like the same thing copied and pasted but bigger. Uh, we have Freezy, which I have Ice Fire because it's like a fire that's frozen. Uh, that'd be fun. Its speed would probably be awful, but hey, that'd be fun. <laughs> Not for Stealth Rocks though. Uh, Mr. Blizzard, everyone's favorite snowman. Has he only appeared like in the Nintendo 64 era in 64 DS? I guess uh, he was in Mario Party 4 too. I don't think Mr. Blizzard has shown up much since. Or no, he showed up in uh, Sticker Star. He was like the fourth boss there. And Chill Bully, uh, I believe that was in Super Mario 64 DS. No, Chill Bully was in 64, and then Chief Chill was a special boss in 64 DS. Uh, ice and Ice Fighting type. I didn't mention that Big Bully would be Fire Fighting type, and Bully would be Fire. Uh, and then for Mario Galaxy, we have Lil Burr, and that evolves into Baron Burr. Dolphin. I thought the dolphin had a name. I thought it was like Flipper or something. But we, we have Dolphin. Dr. Dolphin. Get, get that boy in here. Uh, he's gonna evolve into uh, Dory because they have the goggle eyes, at least the remake of Dory in New Super Mario Bros. So it makes sense. Then we have Wimp evolving into Womp and Thwimp evolving into Thwomp. And uh, <laughs> Sukadashi-kun. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Hold on. Gotta look this one up live. Mario Sukadashi-kun. I think it was supposed to be like the mummy block enemy from Super Mario 64. Yeah, I don't know, its its name has changed in the past decade. I don't know what Sukadashi-kun is anymore. Sukadashi-kun! Put the rosy cheeks on its face. Yeah! We got Bristle, a steel bomb type from, I'm guessing, Yoshi. Oh, that's from Paper Mario, okay. Does he have a bomb move? I don't remember. And then, yeah, Bristle, or uh, I'm sorry, Tap Tap from, uh, that, that's from Yoshi, I'm pretty sure. Little spiky ball with Big Billy from uh, Billy and Mandy Nose. Then we got bob -omb. That was a spread I thought turned out really well. Nice foreshortening on the feet. I probably should have made that foot a bit longer. Uh, his his left foot, the, the right foot for our point of view. That will evolve into King Om, I guess. I <laughs> Gotta get that 10 character limit in there, right? Uh, no sprite for King bob -omb. But uh, alternate evolution is Chuckya from Mario 64. Little bomb fighting type. We got a couple bomb enemies going on here now. Uh, we got Bullet Bill evolving into Bonsai Bill. Those are bomb flying types. Uh, we got Blurp. Was that a fish? Okay, that's the that's the green sheep sheep from Mario World. I think totally unrelated. And right after it in the Pokedex is Sushi. Uh, also kind of just been disappearing from the Mario lore. And then we have another, I guess, is Kingfin a shark? But we got Fishbone uh, and Kingfin. I think both from Mario Galaxy. Fishbone might be from uh, I think Mario World. And then uh, just, you know, random Torpedo Ted, a bomb water type. Because, you know, you got the bomb type, might as well take advantage of it being here. And then it uh, looks like we're probably like in uh, the Yoshi Island area because we have Yoshi on the Pokedex. I have it listed as a normal type, probably would have chosen Dragon if I made it today. Birdo also on here. Might be a version exclusive having Yoshi and Birdo. Also would have done a Dragon type for that one. Shrooblet, and that will evolve into Shroob. Blake submitted a sprite for Shroob. It's Poison Psychic. Psychic is probably a uh, cover up for Dark type again because, I mean, again, I haven't played the game, so I don't know if they're actually psychic or not, but I, I'm guessing it would have been dark type. Uh, next is Draglet. I think that's from Mario 3D Land, and it evolves into Rex from Mario World. Some dragon types. More Pokemon we have sprites too. We have Magma from Super Mario Galaxy 2, and that will evolve into Magmarg. I used the Quagsire sprite for Magma. Uh, the eyes and mouth are pretty cool. And then Magmar looks like I used, like, Explode. I think... <laughs> Well, let's, let's just say Electrode was used in here. I think this was like mostly original. Yeah, I went stupid on this. The, the nose is like crooked. The eyes are like staring into your soul. Mouth is like not in the same plane of existence as the, as the eyes. The tongue is just like sloping up into the abyss. It looks okay. <laughs> Would redo. 10 out of 10 would redo. Little Sparky, and, and that evolves into Hothead. 
Little Sparky's an electric type, Hothead's electric fire. These might be from Mario World. I think one of them is from Mario World. Because uh, Hothead's from like Smash Bros. And from Mario Galaxy, we have Octo Guy. We actually have a quite quite a few sprites here, but we have Octo Guy that will evolve into either King Caliente, uh, a boss from Mario Galaxy 1. You can also evolve it into Prince Picante from Super Mario Galaxy 2. King Caliente would be Rock Fire. Prince Picante would be Rock Ice. I don't know what I would do on how you evolve one to one or the other. Other, but uh, yeah, some uh, seahorses from Mario Land, I think. We have a Yororin, and that evolves into Dragon Zamasu, or I abbreviated it to Drazamasu. But yeah, those are both dragon water types. And then uh, we have Luma, a psychic rock type. Probably would have put fire, probably makes more sense, but I wanted psychic because we need a psychic rock, because probably because like uh, Soul Rock and Lunatone. Next is Cobrat from Super Mario Bros. 2. And I do have a sprite for that one. It's an Ekans that's red, but then it would evolve into to Triclide. Those would both be fire types. And uh, <laughs> Diddy Kong is going to evolve into Donkey Kong. I hope you guys are happy with that. It would be a fighting type. Well, or both of them would be fighting type. We have Treville from like one of the Mario and Luigi games. It's a grass ghost type. Bouldergeist, rock ghost type. And Phantomanta from Super Mario Sunshine. That's a water ghost type. And then, um, see, I think there might have been like a side quest where like you go to labs. Because, you know, like, all the Pokemon are supposed to be like genetically made by scientists or whatever. But we have Fever, Chill, and Weird from Dr. Mario. They're all poison types. Fever is fire type 2, chill is ice type 2, and weird is ground type 2. For our pseudo legendary, we have Koopa Kid from Mario Party that will evolve into Bowser Jr. from Super Mario Sunshine, which evolves into Bowser, the, the Mac Daddy, I believe. Now, whoever made the Bowser sprite, they, they gave me their blessing to use that in this Pokedex. Koopa Kid and Bowser Jr. would be dragon types, Bowser would be dragon fire. And then our Mew and Mewtwo type Pokemon, we have Wart from Super Mario Bros. 2, psychic type. Not sure what it would have been besides Psychic. And uh, from Super Mario Land, we have Tatanga, also Psychic type. I think it made sense to make them Psychic because of Mew and Mewtwo, but I don't know. But yeah, that's all 151. And then on screen, I'm not going to read these out loud, but I did put Evolution time for the Pokemon. So like Piranha Plant is level 14 and then level 36. Potoboo is level 17 and then 34. And Baby Cheap is level 16 and 36. Go ahead and read those if you want. Um, I I guess I gave up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wrote, I'll get to the rest. Oh, and here I, I did put credits actually. Blaquaza made uh, Jibber J, Big Bully, Shroob, Battle Beetle, Swooper, Koopa Troopa, and Paratroopa. I don't know where the Paratroopa sprite went. Some guy named Dan. I really don't remember Dan. Uh, he made many badges. Title. Uh, God, what was your username? I, I know like I abbreviated people, but Title made a lot of the trainer sprites. Twisty. Who is Twisty? God, I think she became a mod like eventually after I left. Um, Blake actually became a mod too after I left. Yeah, Twisty made the Professor Oak sprite, so yeah, that wasn't me. And then it was Jalorda Princess that made Bowser. And Hiker Man made the Hammer Bro Charmeleon repose. Anyone who I missed and everyone who gave suggestions. Gonna gotta include everybody in here. So now that we've gone through that all, first of all, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, was this a cool idea? Did I do a good job making these sprites when I was uh, 12 years old? I had a lot of fun with this. I, I did end up quitting because of A, like... Um, I think my computer deleting a lot of sprites just like killed my momentum for me. I was gonna read some of the posts that happened in the future, but I decided not to. The reason I did quit is because I started getting into YouTube because I got my 3DS and I was using the camera on that to record Let's Plays. And then Johan leaving, that also just like made me not want to hang on the forum as much because no one really knew what was going on. But since we are here, we might as well just scroll through my long ass banner. Oh my god. See... <laughs> This is why kids shouldn't be on the internet, because they're making banners that are the entire page. So first we got a Kid Icarus banner, because Kid Icarus Uprising was like the newest thing. Really fun game, if you have a 3DS, I definitely recommend trying it out. But we have a little Mario banner thing I made, like this is what the banners looked like, that would be under your avatar, showing how many posts you had. So it'd be like, where Mario is, it would be like Brock, and then there would be like a Geodude, and an Onyx behind him. And then the, the Boulder Batch would be in the bottom left corner. So I copied that and just made one for my own banner. The Clamp Pearl animation was something I won in one of the sprite contests I entered. I think if you place top three, you would get like an egg and then after like a couple months whoever gave you that egg would just like dm you a sprite of the pokemon that would be inside the egg and then after like another couple months and then it evolved and then the the brown egg i don't remember what was in that it might be on a different page 
And then, uh, see, this is why I feel shit about, like, I, I think I have, like, imposter syndrome about art, because, you know, I made the Maga Pox right, and that's what I call the Togepi Arbok Mawel thing. You know, someone was, like, willing to, like, animate the sprite for me, and, like, I don't know, I just, I feel like I'm not a good artist, just seeing how simple this is, but it still is, like, way better than anything I could do. But, like, it, look, it's, it's so nice looking. And then there's this little banner called Johto Journeys. Me and my sister used to play Pokemon games at the exact same time, every single time. So when Fire Red and Leaf Green came out, we were literally playing that game at the exact same time, every single time we wanted to play the game, as if we were, like, on the adventure together. But, like, once we got to Rock Tunnel, my sister couldn't past that and so everything just kind of got like super skewed we were playing uh i i had silver my sister had gold then we had the sweet swallowed banner made by akita wolf i think i had to like win a sprite competition to get that and i'm so glad that i did because i love this banner little mario pretty nine banner me just stretching sprites and shit and then some random sprite made by savior cody actually th this guy uh, subscribed to my youtube channel recently because I was nostalgic for the forums like last year and I was looking up a YouTube video and it had to be one that he posted. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the sprite was, but Cody, uh, thanks for making it. <laughs> oh my god, the, the fucking weasel. I don't even know what episode of Pokemon this was. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you're just not prepared. Oh my god. I, I act... <laughs> I should have I shouldn't have shown this, but I knew someone was gonna find it if this video gets viral. Oh my god! I I have a second banner that has Sad Weasel too. Let me find it. Oh my god, Sad Boy Hours. <laughs> Look, I had Pop Tart Bunnies. <laughs> you think this is anything out of the ordinary? Fucking fucking dark wood floor background. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what you say? <laughs> Where where did I get these fucking images of Weasel being sad? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, and uh yeah, here's where here's where things died. Uh September 5th, 2012. Unfortunately I'm giving up on this region. I can't find the time to sprite too often, plus school started for me this week, and I'll need to study harder if I want a high GPA. That's a lie. I got straight A's that first trimester, so you know. <laughs> Odd flex, but I also think that it's hard getting a Pokemon Mario sprite to look good. Most sprites were made by me, check for credits on the front, and I won't let others use them unless they ask and give credit. <laughs> yeah, that's why would you want that? Why would anyone want the dry browser sprite? Put that on your Mario Kart Wii thumbnail, you will not get any views. I do plan for a different project to happen in the near future that will involve Pikmin. That will be when the third installment is released. For whatever reason, I was like in a little Pikmin phase. Uh, I was gonna make the distant region. Yeah, I, I don't care for Pikmin much now. I, I did see Pikmin has a potential for a Pokemon universe just because, you know, Bulborbs have like so many variants. Wallywogs and Wogpoles, uh, the Sheargruves and Sheerwigs all could like evolve into each other. The Snagret birds, whatever they're called, those have like an evolution line you could work with. Just, to, you know, have a Gatling growing <laughs> Pokemon, <laughs> that would be insane. Blake says, uh, aw, it's a shame that this region is being canceled and I probably won't get too involved with the new Pikmin region because I passionately hate that franchise. Franchise. It robbed us of a Mario game, and I hate Olimar. However, I do wish you all the best with this new project. So, thank you, Blake. But yeah, that's the end of Shroudum. Never touched it ever again since, except for this video. So yeah, I mean, it, it's been uh, it's been 10 years since I started this project. I mean, I still have a huge passion for Mario. Pokemon, not as much. Like I said, Pokemon Sapphire is my favorite video game of all time. But but yeah, I mean, I, I'm still like a huge Pokemon fan. Have not bought the Sword and Shield DLC yet, so you know that that's where I'm at. But Mario, I'll live and die for Mario. Mario Party, everything. Yeah, so thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. I have a playlist of reviews of video games. Um, if you're here, you are probably interested in Mario or Pokemon. I have the two-hour Pokemon Sapphire retrospective I posted in April. And if you're here for Mario, I've covered Mario Party 1, Mario Party 2, this web show from the same era as this forum called Stupid Mario Bros. Uh, there's like a 30 minute review I made on that. So yeah, consider consider checking that out. Feel free to leave a like as well as the channel grow. Subscribe to get updates on my uploads as soon as they happen. But until then, I will see you all next time.